Jason Vio, and you're watching an exclusive video lesson from the Artist Works Online Classical Guitar School. This is another installment on phrasing and playing expressively. Uh, in previous lessons, we looked at the classical era phrasing with the variations on a theme of Mozart by Soar, and then we used a couple examples in, the, in, in another lesson, uh, a couple examples by Bach from Bach Preludes about how to phrase uh, through that. Um, but what to do with some of the more, as the music becomes more uh, long breathed in terms of its phrasing and, and, and throughout the, the, the latter half of the 19th century is there's more um, searching elements of the music. They go into more key areas and this kind of thing, well, how to, how to break that down? Well, a lot of those rules st started to get to become the rules of the classical era. Of course, in the 19th century, we start to become broken, and, and composers could really have their own style and their own, they could make a phrase as long as they want, as they wanted to, really. Um, so I want to use from the guitar repertoire an example of Augustin Barrios, uh, Julia Florida, which is one of my all-time favorite pieces. It's a gorgeous melody, um, but there's but it's not the easiest kind of uh, of of melody to break down because it's quite long. In fact, the whole first section, the A section, of of Julia Florida, um, is basically broken into two large phrases. So I'll just play the A section for you right now. just a two bar introduction and then a measure three the melody starts So that's the A section. It then goes into uh, B minor for the for the second section or B section. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of um, that's a lot of music that goes by in really just two phrases. So so how to analyze that? Where where how do I know when to crescendo and where to decrescendo? Well, really good composers have a have a way, just a way of of writing something that really seems perfectly logical. And this is a good example of that. If we look at the melody starting on measure three, we're in, we're in D major, of course. The piece is in D major. He starts the melody on the fifth scale degree. And somewhat lower, low in the guitar's register. Over the course of, of uh, 16 measures, that melody note is gonna go from here all the way up to here, more, an octave and a half above its original starting place. But how he gets there is gives you the clues as to how to phrase. He starts on the fifth scale degree, stays there for the next microphrase, then in the next rhythmic grouping or microphrase, let's call them rhythmic groupings really, or melodic groupings. That's where we now go up a fourth. The melody climbs stepwise up to a fourth. And then in the next measure, maybe it comes up stepwise to E, but then essentially stays where it is at D. So right there, we have kind of a staircase kind of thing forming. And he actually develops that through the entire A section. So we have starting here at A, stepwise up and back down. 
and then our first stair stair step, if you will, uh, three note. And so that's where I take the opportunity to maybe build the phrase a little bit, or to add some dynamic, or to a crescendo, basically, up to that D note. I sort of hold my position dynamically, if you will. And then another leap up a perfect fourth to G. Holding position. And then, and then he basically caps the phrase with a, with a lovely turn, which then winds its way back down to the original starting place. Like this. So if I play that whole phrase, I want you to listen for, again, where I crescendo the phrase and where I kind of sort of I hold my uh, position dynamically, and then when I move forward again, it's all really in the details of the melody. I'm just taking my cues from the melody that Barrios wrote. That's the first phrase of the A section. That's half of the A section right there. The second phrase does essentially the same thing, but we climb higher all the way up to a high D. And, and I'll just uh, play that and you'll, you'll hear what I'm doing with that. save in that second phrase, I want to make sure I still have room left dynamically upward so that I can make those that this high B, high C and, and high, high C sharp and high D a higher peak than the previous phrase. So basically I'm making an arc shape like this for the first phrase and then a little higher for the next phrase. That has a simultaneous effect of providing an arc shape for the entire first section, the whole A section. And this is the kind of narrative that if you can imbue the music with this kind of lyrical narrative, and I really believe that the best composers write this into their music. It's just a, a logical uh, thing that happens. It's, a, it's an ev inevitable conclusion, if you will, for their music. If you can imbue your pieces with this kind of musical narrative, it really pulls the listener along, just like a good novel or, or a good movie. They can't put it down. So uh, look, for these, look for these clues, these melodic clues, and harmonic clues as well, in all of your pieces. <laughs> 